Well, hello and welcome to Death Wench's SAS blog. Today we're going to talk about merging. I have my metadata up here, but I actually meant to have this up here. Merge. Isn't this a beautiful picture? Uh, I have the link up on my blog. This is by Viviana Pastor. This is a picture of the Auckland Harbor Bridge. And there's this merge. See, there's one table on one side and one table on the other. And so let's just get right into our merging. So here's our dilemma. Um, here's this fake data I made. Uh, this is about a, a fictitious situation. It's a clinic that opened last year in 2011 um, that only serves cartoon characters. And I want to emphasize that this is fabricated data. This is not real data about cartoon characters because um, that's against HIPAA to share. All right. So uh, this is our metadata. Here's my, you can go here on um, my blog. You've got the calculation page. Well, I actually hard coded the MRN so we could follow a few MRNs through the table that we could remember. Hard coded the cartoon name and calculated date of birth between 1940 and 1980 and then instantiated it over here. I just want to call attention to um, medical record number is a required field here. It's a primary key, so that's all unique. Everybody gets their own medical record number. And also name, it, it's a required field. It can be the same as others, but it's required. Okay. So now moving on to the appointment table here, which I didn't need to calculate. There's a row ID there, which is a primary key. So remember that's unique in all the tables. So, um, and that's required. Then there's a foreign key to medical record numbers. So you see what's going on here. These are the characters here. Here are their appointments. Now we're told that uh, there was a big recruitment thing done and so there may be um, patients that don't have appointments and might be good to follow up, right? Okay, and then here in the appointment table you've got appointment date, which is gonna be tw late 2011. That's when they started the clinic. You know, one, one to many relationship because some of these patients might have more than one appointment and then their primary diagnosis. Let's just quickly go through a few cases here. Here's a person table. Uh, looking under medical record number 456, we've got Fred Flintstone here, born in 1930. Uh, exhibit A, there's a link on my blog. Uh, risk factor number one, obesity. Risk factor number two, diet. Scroll down here. Risk factor three, sedentaryism. Over here, see, remember this medical record of 456, we're going to follow him to the appointment table. What do we see? We see three appointments for 456, all in March. High blood pressure, a couple for CBD. All right. Phineas J. Whoopi, those of you, he was part of why Tennessee Tuxedo did not fail. He's getting on in years here, born in the 60s. All right. He's 5'5'6", five, five, we go over here, high blood pressure, couple of visits in January. One last person, we're going to go through 666, Yosemite Sam, over here, violence, violent, moody, problematic. Look over here, 666, we'll follow new appointment table, four appointments, high blood pressure, CVD, diabetes, asthma, all that stress, right? All right, so now what we're going to do is have to merge these two tables. We'll have to merge these two tables. So let's go over to our code. So go to my blog and figure out how to download those as CSVs and then um, build the code to load them in, which I'm going to do right here. Uh, and you should be able to do that too. And then we'll go into work and we'll see here we are. Now I'm going to just open this. We were just looking at it. But one thing I want to call your attention to is even though the medical record number, this is the person table, even though that's your primary key, it's not an actually uh, sorted order. Okay. And appointment, row ID is sorted. That looks nice. Their pri that primary key is. But medical record number is not because obviously they can just come in any time they want. Right. I'll make a new record. All right. So we want to put those two tables together. I just pointed out how the data is not sorted right. Now I'm going to run the merge with the data not sorted right and you'll see what happens. 
Those of you who are used to indexes or indices in SQL, what happens in SAS is you can put an index down, but it takes a long time, like SAS has to really think about it. So basically what you do is you sort by whatever you want to index. And I'll show you what I mean by having it not work. So here's the code. The code is correct. It's data person underscore appointment, because I'm joining the two, why not name it that? And that's going to throw it in work here. So we have merge person appointment, okay, and then semicolon, by MRN. This is whatever you're hooking the two tables together with. These are the two um, tables you're hooking together and notice that there's no semicolon between them. Theoretically you could hook even more. That they all just would have to have the by in there, which is MRN. We're going to run this. We're going to look at the log and we're going to see. By variables are not properly sorted. Okay, so why don't they sort for us? I don't know. Uh, when we get to medical record number 909, Big Bird, date of birth over here. He's a 60s child. He's out of order, so even though it's created person appointment and started to build it, it kind of breaks, right? So I'm going to clear the log here because I don't want to face what just happened. And we're going to just put some sort code in there to fix it. So this is kind of like how you hand build your indices in SAS. You sort by whatever you want. So proc sort data equals person by MRN, same thing, and by MRN run. Look at the log. Looks pleased. Now we're going to go back and do the same old merge code. Nothing's different here. This time when we go to the log, it doesn't complain. We open our person appointment. We've got some interesting stuff going on here. So remember. First of all, remember row ID from the appointment table? That was our primary key. That had to be filled in, but look, it's empty here. Well, why? Well, Mickey Mouse was over here in the person table, had no appointments. So notice those, those with this empty row ID, they are uh, cases where they were on this person table, and then they were not in the appointment table. So that's what happened in that merge to them. Secondly, get down to speed racer here you see he's repeated all over here and he's repeated as many times as there is an appointment so I know whether what looked like ha it happened here is that there was this right join from the appointment back to the person so how you know um, that they had an appointment at all or any appointment is really by this row ID here so, as you can see, that's what your resulting data set looks like. Um, yay, we did a merge. Okay, so let's answer some real questions, right? So I have some code here for you. So like I said, we started our clinic, and now we're going to do some decision support. We've recruited some patients, as I said, and not all of them have had their first appointment, so we kind of care about that. What characters are patients with no appointments, and we'd like to schedule them for their first appointment, right? So, um, let's see here. Proc SQL, select all from person underscore appointment, and then remember what I talked about, where row ID is null, where there's no appointment, but they're already a patient, um, row ID is null. So we're going to go over this one, run it, and here we see long list of um, recruited patients that haven't visited us yet. There's a uh, like a rodent here, right? And oh, here's a bird. Um, let me see. Here's a, another rodent, another bird, bird. See what I'm saying? Bird. You could really like put this together into, you know, like an intervention, right? Or some sort of social marketing. All right, next problem that we have is um, what characters are patients who've had appointments, right? So in other words, who are your customers and what can we tell about these people? So I built this query. This is a useful query just to start out with. Oh, and by the way, for the last query and this query, any query, what you start with is that merge. And then you can always pull out of there what you want. 
Oh, you know, set criteria on that and turn it into different kinds of tables that you want to study. So who are our customers? Well, first of all, we know we're going to pick the opposite. This is is null. This is, is not null, right? But I also added order by medical record number, so it's like putting all the per people together, and by appointment date, so that we can see the patterns of appointments. And here we go. Let's start with Speed Racer here. It's together. We see a pattern of appointments starting in um, August, uh, when he's recruited at the asthma screening that they did at the health center. So you've got uh, November, December, and January high blood pressure visits, but we haven't heard from him since. Okay. You could do a query to pull those kind of people out of this table, this separate table, and maybe do a mailing or try to recruit them. Here's Puffin stuff. He was recruited with that asthma screening back uh, last year. That was a big push, but we haven't seen him um, since. And so you can have maybe query out those with just one record in the table like this. And here's Pepe Le Pew, same thing, top cap down here, right? On the other hand, you've got some patients like Uncle Scrooge who are coming in regularly with their high blood pressure monthly. Maybe you want to do some retention or some, you know, thank you to them. Wait a second, who's 998? There's no name here. What's going on? Well, okay. We shouldn't have any appointments that are not associated with any cartoon characters, right? It's illogical and it's not uh, synchronous with our documentation. I mean, after all, we. Um, then we have this over here that it says that name is supposed to be filled in. I don't see a name there. Well, let's go back here. Prox equals select all from person underscore appointment where name is null. It's not supposed to happen, but there you go. Somebody came in on Valentine's Day with their diabetes. I don't know what's going on. Alright, so as you can see, let's put this on a more pleasant note. Um, this is what you end up doing in SAS when you do a merge. These are the kind of populations you get and that's the kind of big table you get. And then after that you have to kind of pull apart and study it separately to get any use out of it. I hope that this was a very useful blog post for you and have fun programming your merges like this merge in SAS.